The internet really is a strange place. Last week, I reacted to a video of Sneeko, Young Don, Abba and Preach, Gideon having a discussion with Nick Funtes. If you don't know who Nick Funtes is, that's a good thing because he holds white separatist points of views. He also believes that there are genetic differences between black people and white people, and one of that which is lower IQ test scores amongst black people. In my original video, I pointed out that the discrepancies between IQ test scores is closer correlated to environmental factors and cultural bias. You know, like the IQ test being designed by people who adhere to eugenics. That video got the attention of some of Nick's trolls. So I allowed them to call into my stream. One of them, to my surprise, was a black white supremacist that views black people as inferior based on IQ tests. I believe IQ is an accurate measurement of living successfully in a civilized society. With, with going to prison, IQ correlates heavily with going to prison, uh, with for violent crimes, not just blue collar crimes. It correlates heavily with um, things like making money or mathematics. So yes, I believe IQ is a good measurement. So I thought it'd be interesting to share this exchange with you and why it's utter nonsense. Supremacy is defined as the state or condition of being superior to all others in authority, power, or status. So he correlates a lower IQ with being more likely to commit crimes and make less money with black people. The idea that black people are genetically inferior when it comes to intelligence is by definition a white supremacist position. Now, this isn't an uncommon position historically, but it has become more and more rare. It isn't common for someone to identify as being black and hold this position, which reminded me of a character on Dave Chappelle's show named Clayton Bigsby. Clayton Bigsby was a blind man who was black but was told his entire life he was white and was therefore a black, white supremacist. Just cause I'm blind don't mean I'm dumb. How could this have happened? A black, white supremacist. He refused to show himself on camera because frankly, he didn't want to lose his job. And here is some more of our conversation. I want to let Bibble jump in here a little bit. Bibble is uh, probably He's a bigger, bigger underboss than even He's me. black. He's they black. Go ahead, Bibble. Bibble, Bibble, just I jump gotta in. I got to talk to the to the black white nationalist. This is a lot, man. Mm -hmm. This is a lot. OK. I'd like to know why you think that IQ is not affected by genetics. I'd like to know why you think IQ is affected by genetics when you measure it across socioeconomic and, and environmental factors. How did you come to that conclusion? Uh, through studies. Uh, what through studies? studies like the men are, name, name, name me a study that's factored in the, 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 the father being in the home, the socioeconomic status, and the access to the same education that's proved that black people perform worse on an IQ test. You have things like the Minnesota transracial adoption study uh, that pretty conclusively shows that uh, there is a genetic component uh, about one standard deviation. So uh, on average, uh, black people have a average IQ that is 85. That is correct. So the average IQ in the United States is 98. One standard deviation is 15 points. So what he's saying here is on average, black people, regardless of their access to education, regardless on their environment, will score 15 points lower than white people. Now for reference, an IQ between 70 and 75 means that someone has a learning disability. So in this world of believing black people are intellectually inferior to white people, the claim is that black people are basically closer to having a learning disability. It's important to note that humanity was created in the image of God. This is the doctrine of the Imago Dei, that we have value, dignity, worth, because we're all image bearers of God. And though we may appear different, given the same resources and access to opportunity, people, regardless of their race, perform similarly outside of a few outliers here or there. I believe that when you account for socioeconomic and when you account for family structure, yes, it does hold constant. I'm saying that when you had white couples of a higher economic status that adopted white children, and you had white, white couples of a higher economic status that adopted black children, on average, there was still one standard deviation. Now, black children did score higher when they were adopted by white people. That is true. So that does account for some socioeconomics. Well, I decided to look into the Minnesota twin study. And what I found may shock you. 
The study basically followed twins separated at birth and measured their IQs over their lifespan. They found that regardless on the families they were raised in, their IQs were more or less similar. However, in a paper published from Drew Thomas in 2016, reanalyzed these adoption studies and found that once corrected for attrition in the low IQ, white adoptees and once corrected for the Flynn effect, since none of the Asian adoptees studied had control groups, mixed and white adoptees scored the same and black adoptees scored a little lower with a gap of 2.5 points, which can be explained by their pre-adoption characteristics. Translation, when you factor in environment, when you factor in access to education, the same access to tutors, the same access to parents in the home, blacks, whites, Asians, it's only about a 2.5 point difference. Not a standard deviation as claimed by our black white supremacist friend. Later in the interview, I decided it would be appropriate to ask him what his IQ was. And this was his answer. What is your IQ? I don't know what my IQ is. You hold this position, but you've never been curious enough, Bibble, to, to, to actually go and figure out where you land on the spectrum? Is that because you, you, no, you ignorance is bliss I, or why? Why would you not want to know your IQ if you hold these positions? Um, because I was never tested as a child that I know of. And as an adult, yes, I am a bit afraid of uh, where I might land on there. Aww. Do you think IQ is static, Bibble? Well, that is a good question. Now, there are some arguments that IQ can improve with work, but for the most part, genetics act as a limiter. So now static means that it never changes. I don't believe it never changes. I, I believe that people could possibly increase their IQ by a few points. But if you're talking about a standard deviation, then no, I don't believe it's uh, so I looked into this claim also, and I found out that multiple studies have documented significant IQ gains over a phenomenon labeled the Flynn effect. The Flynn IQ is observed rise in IQs over the last century discovered by James Flynn. In a series of research in the 1980s, Flynn was able to show IQ gains in the Stanford Bennett Intelligence Test and the Welcher Intelligence Test for some countries. These gains in IQ were observed in the developed world and recent evidence suggests that the developing world is en route towards higher intelligence scores. This article is an answer to whether the measured low IQs in Africa will rise and how that process of IQ gains will pan out. Translation, IQ has been on a rise for a very long time in Kenya's most rural parts. Cause who would have thought, as people get more access to food, shelter, and education, they tend to perform better on these standardized tests. This is even true for America. In 1917, Americans had a mean IQ of 72 against today's norms, and a good estimate for the 1900s would be 67. Currently, the United States has an average IQ of 100, which shows an increase of more than 30 IQ points over the last few generations, meaning two standard deviation jumps over the last two generations. Why? Well, because we've had more access to food, shelter, clothing, education, and economic opportunity. So the Minnesota twin studies that he referenced actually proves my point. That when you account for all these different variables like environment, access to education, and the type of parents are in the home, IQ is not static. And a fundamental mistake is made conflating someone's brain, which they claim is different based on genetics, versus how someone's mind is engaged in the process of thinking, engaging, and problem solving. Now, why is all this important? Well, because as followers of Jesus, we believe that God made all people in his image. And this is evidenced not only in the creation story, but also in the New Testament, where some people in the early church believed that the gospel was only for the Jews, but God called them to reach people beyond the Jewish ethnic identity specifically Gentiles. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34, Peter began to speak, saying, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, not genetically, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Galatians 3.28 says that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So can you imagine being afraid to take an IQ test because you believe you are genetically inferior? All along, being numb to the fact that you're able to engage in rather deep philosophical and scientific conversations while missing the obvious elephant in the room. That though people are different, most of us never tap into our true God-given potential. And that the real tragedy isn't the differences that we have, 
The real tragedy is that we walk around viewing certain people based on their external appearance as inferior or superior. And this is completely anti-gospel. So if you're struggling with some sort of inferiority complex, or if you, my friend, are watching this, you know who you are. I would remind you that you are created in the image of God, that you were knit together in your mother's womb, that you have incredible potential, that when you anchor your identity in Christ, it goes way beyond earthly perspectives, some weird political ideology, or an inferiority complex. That when we understand how valuable we really are because of the work of the cross, we can walk in the deepness and the fullness of what Jesus has for us on this side of eternity. Understanding that he came and lived the life that we couldn't live, and he died the death that we should have died. And through his death and resurrection on the cross, we've been given a pathway to spend an eternity with God in the afterlife, but also to experience a piece of heaven on this side of eternity. So if you enjoy this video and wanna see my original reaction, which spurred off this entire conversation, you can click this video here or check out this other video recommended for me and YouTube here. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.